Hello everyone, welcome back to the Software Architecture Blog series where we speak about all things software architecture. I'm your host Tengiz. I'm a software architect with experience in application, solution and enterprise architecture fields. And I'm also a book author. You can buy my book, Effective Software Development for Enterprise on Amazon and other marketplaces. Today we are speaking about a topic, modular software architecture. And the question of today will be, should we go with modules or should we go with layers? Let's try to answer that today. This is a big topic, so let's get started. First, let's discuss how the need for the modules evolved over time. As you all know, we have this structure called layers and the three layer architecture is very popular in today's software architecture world, specifically UI, business logic and data access layer, but they are not enough sometimes and that is where the need for the modules evolves. Where are the problems with these three layer architectures? So the layers are horizontal and they are far from the business concepts. When you speak to the business or domain experts and they break down the entire domain into subdomains or the concepts that they understand, they will not match with the layers because layers are horizontal. Business people will not speak about user interface, about business logic, about data access layer or the storages. They will speak about functionality pieces, such as, for instance, a checkout, or for instance, a product catalog, or maybe a, a product definition, or maybe claims or insurance, and so on. So those concepts make more sense for the business people, but not necessarily the layer. This disconnect was one of the reasons why people started to think that there is something missing in the structuring of the applications. So naturally, when we speak about domains and subdomains and the business concepts, they are vertical things. They are not horizontal as opposed to the horizontal layers that are very popular. So effectively, what we are missing is a connection between the structures that we build and that the domain experts understand. So one way to tackle this problem, some might think, would be to add more layers and give them different names. But that will not solve the problem because layers will stay horizontal. So we need something that does make the vertical slice instead of the horizontal cuts. That is where the need for the modules comes into picture. And do not try to solve this problem by adding more layers because you are just aggravating the problem that is the disconnect between the business concepts and the technical structures that you build. However, it's worth noting that if you are about to add more layers, go and check out some different layering structures and literature around them and just follow them. Do not invent too many layers. They don't have a reason to exist. For instance, my favorite layering schema is not necessarily this three layer architecture, but it is rather an onion architecture, which consists of four layers and they are user interface, application or service layer. These are synonyms used for the same layer. And then comes the business layer or the domain layer. Again, synonyms for the same layer. And finally, the infrastructure layer, which houses the data access and other platform specific concerns and implementations. Anyway, let's come back to the modules topic. And let's understand what the module is and how it's going to solve the problems that I earlier described. A general definition of module is some grouping of the related components and keeping them isolated from other modules, which group in turn other components more related to each other. So module creates a cohesive boundary of interrelated components. And generally speaking, module is a vertical slice and not a horizontal slice. What that means is module consists of all the typical layers within rather than 
being part of a specific layer only. So for instance, if you look at one module, which might correspond to, for instance, a claims module of the insurance application, it might consist of the UI layer within, as well as the business logic, as well as the data access, and all the needed pieces are together cohesively in one single module called claims. Of course, the claims can also be a subdomain, but that's a different topic. We will not go there today. And since we are speaking about definitions, there is also an alternate definition, which used to be my definition in the past as well, but I have gone away from that definition. But it is worth explaining that as well. Earlier, I used to think that the module is a piece of a single layer. So I used to think that the module is just more granular breakdown of a layer. However, this definition stopped to make sense as the time passed because such things as the microservices were introduced and the domains and the subdomains. And as you can notice, the tendency is to break things down based on the business concepts rather than on the technical characteristics. So if I had to put a module within each layer, it would have to be a technical breakdown because the layer itself is a technical term. Instead, I have decided to go away from that old style definition and make the layer the self-contained, more cohesive unit. But since we are speaking about this topic, let's just imagine what would happen if we put the module within a layer. If you had this most popular three-layer architecture, for instance, user interface, business logic, and data access layer, and if you break them down by modules, you will end up having the same module within each layer. For instance, if you have these three layers and you want to implement the module called claims, Chances are that before the claims, you have to implement user interface, you have to write some business logic, and there will be some data access related to the claims. So how do you belong all those components living in different three horizontal layers into the same module? You would have to put the same module in each layer, and the structure becomes a little bit awkward, so we should not do that. And so that tells us that we should separate all components and all layers related to the module in their own cohesive boundary. Now that we have discussed the general definitions of the module and so the modular architecture, let's see some of the benefits that this style of structure brings to your software when you utilize it. First obvious benefit, of course, is grouping of the interrelated components, as I mentioned earlier. There is this concept called cohesion, which goes hand in hand with the loose coupling, and both of them are related to this grouping benefit that the module delivers. Module groups cohesively related elements together, and what that means is if the elements are naturally related to each other, you want to see them together, and module helps you with that distinction. Module is also handy with the loose coupling. Not related modules are kept away from each other, and so the components that are within also are kept away from each other because there is a loose coupling between them and you do not want to put them within the same boundary. So module again helps in this task as well. Next, module helps with the dependency management. If you can imagine when you have uh, lots of components within your software, there is some dependency graph within them. For instance, you might have a class which represents a claim and another class which represents a customer and there is dependency between them because the claim belongs to the customer. And when you want to manage that dependency well and keep it clean, you want to understand where the customer belongs and where the claim belongs in terms of the modules. Claim will belong to the claims module, for instance, and customer might belong to the customer management module, and there is some dependency between those modules. So having these two modules, you might decide that the claims module depends on the customer's module, or maybe the other way around, based on your domain concerns, 
but whichever way you decide, that is the same dependency direction that will be defined between the components contained within those modules. For instance, if the claims module depends on the customer management module, then the claim class will depend on the customer class and not the other way around. This helps with both avoiding the circular references as well as keeping this one-way direction which is a good idea in general when designing classes and components within your software code base. And when you take this benefit of clean dependency management that the module delivers for each component to the entire code base level, that is when you will enjoy the structure and order of your entire application and that is again thanks to the module. And finally, modules, of course, keep a better connection with the business concepts, as I mentioned earlier. Module claims makes more sense rather than the layer called user interface or business logic, because that does not relate to the business concepts that much as the module names would. And this relation between the business and technical concepts or terminology is a well-known benefit which takes roots from the domain-driven design and model-driven design and other similar sciences which tackle complexity within the software projects. So I highly recommend that you check out those disciplines as well as try to practice the modular architecture for those same benefits. Now let's see how you can implement modules. In real world, we deal with projects and folders and files, and that is where our code base goes. So how do we apply modular architecture to those file and folder structures? Well, first and very simple approach would be just to group interrelated classes and components under a single folder. So you might have a claims folder which then within has the layers related folders such as user interface, business logic and data access layer if you are following of course this popular three layer architecture and then you might have another folder for instance a customer management module and again then the layer related folders within and that's where you organize your classes relating to those modules and their layers within. Another way to organize, if you are working in .NET or other project-oriented environments, you might create projects for each module. For instance, you might have a .NET or C-sharp based project in your Solution Explorer, which represents a single module, and you would put all classes and components and all implementation details related to that single module under that project and you might have then another project which represents another module. Of course it might take you toward the path of having too many projects because you might have too many modules but that is all right. At some point some modules might mature and become their own bounded context or might become even a microservice or a separately hosted application or a service. And so maybe this is a good route to consider at all if your project is growing fast. And finally, you might as well be using a framework which comes with a built-in concept of modules and it might as well give structure and organization to your code base and projects. For instance, one implementation of the modular architecture, which I personally like a lot, comes with the Angular framework. There you define the components and assign them to their parent modules, and then you define the dependencies between the modules, which also drives and enforces the dependency direction between the components within those modules. This implementation could simplify your understanding of your code base a lot. So I like it for that reason. And finally, let's discuss quickly what the modular architecture is not. Module is not the same pattern as plugin, which is mistakenly perceived as a module pattern, but they are two different things. Module is this mechanism which applies the cohesive boundary to interrelated components and plugin, on the other hand, more reminds me about the abstract factory design pattern where you have this unified interface and a couple of implementations of it, each representing 
all the interrelated concepts and families of objects and components. So plugin follows this unified interface while the modular architecture does not follow this unified interface. So there is difference between them. Uh, examples of plugin would be if you are building an UI application and you are allowing other developers to implement a specific interface which adds additional functionality to your application. You would give them this interface which overrides certain features and that interface is what you load dynamically based on the user selection of the active or inactive plugins. That is a plugin architecture. It is not a modular architecture. Although both of them might be implementing the modular style of the architecture, but it is important to differentiate the two patterns, module versus the plugin. And finally, let's answer the initial questions that I posed. Should we go with layers or with modules? And my answer would be either go with layers and do not introduce modules within layers or go with modules and introduce layers within those modules. But do not go with layers having modules within because that would be that little anti-pattern from which I'm trying to run away for several years now. And that wraps up the topic of the modular software architecture. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to receive notification when I post new videos in the future. Also, if you have questions about modular software architecture, please leave your comment below and I will respond to it for sure. Also, in the comments you can suggest topics that you are interested in and I will be glad to discuss them in the future. Check out my blog about software architecture which I will link in the description of this video. And check out my book Effective Software Development for Enterprise which you can find on Amazon and other marketplaces. This book contains a lot of topics that I'm discussing in this blog as well as on my software architecture blog. So this is a great learning material for everybody who are interested in software architecture or other related areas. Thank you for joining me today and see you next time. Bye bye.